let me just talk about Talis and Bark for a minute. Talis, unbelievably clever uh, writer of counterpoint. In other words, knowing how to combine tunes, um, this with this. So two tunes going on at the same time, combining them, then another one, then another one, then another one, all added together and still making harmony. In other words, they don't, this wouldn't be good. I'm combining tunes together, but they don't work harmonically. They don't make nice chords. So that the cleverness and what we do, we call that vertical and horizontal. So vertically, it makes nice sounds because it is, uh, it's, uh, um, it works harmonically. Horizontally, we're talking about the tunes. So does it work vertically and, hom and horizontally? Brilliant people like Park and um, Talis and Bird and all manner of people are able to make it so that it works as a tune and as another tune and as another one and as another one. And also, um, it works harmonically, um, vertically. So, um, um, and that's very clever. There's a genius who's able to do that. Now, if you just take 12 tone and arrange the 12 tones in various different ways and put them in a row and then combine them, I'm afraid I don't think you're being clever at all mm. because you're just having ideas for, for what, unless you have an end result in mind, uh, the result of, of what happens. But if you just have a few tones here and a 12 tone thing here and, and, the, and the row is in a different order here, and, and so what? You know, you might just as well write. But if it, if it spells out something, some pattern vertically that our brains recognize, then we can say, oh. and that's what happens with Bach writing fugues and with Talis writing uh, marvelous counterpoint. That's how it works. And um, so, and in the, is it called Five Piano Pieces? One of the earlier things that Schoenberg wrote. Mm -hmm. The one I like is where there's, this is repeated. I think it's that. And there's all sorts of gubbins going on all around it. But up, and it comes that. It's the only one I really think, ooh, I rather like that. Because it has a tonal center. We come back to that and whatever else happens. All around it. Sorry, Schoenberg, I can't remember <laughs> what it actually was, so yeah. I may be doing a terrible injustice. But, but, but yeah, no, no. But I think it's that. It's a third like that, coming in a kind of arbitrary rhythm and rather beguiling. And, and that has a sort of center to it. Here are 12 tones one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then you start again one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And you can arrange them in any order you like. And the idea is that you, you go through all of them. Um, and uh, That's how serialism each works. time, yeah, yeah. But you're saying, different combinations. You're saying serialism, <coughs> this 12 tone row method only worked when there was a combination that made something tonal. For me, I'm afraid so, yes. Yeah. And also I'd say, well, hang on, you're not being that revolutionary because we've already worked out this on the basis of that's the most, that's the most consonant, that's the second most consonant, that's the third most consonant, that's the fourth most consonant, fifth, sixth, and gradually added things like that. If you're really going to be revolutionary, why not break that up into a different number than 12? Why not see what it sounds if it's seven? You know, one, two, or what, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or something, yeah. but they'd have to be tuned differently. Um, and the great thing about Talis, there's a wonderful piece, seven part piece called Miserere Nostri, in which the top, two, and it only goes on for two minutes, the top two soprano parts are in precise canon. The four bottom piece, uh, parts are in, um, there's a certain tune, and then they have the tune, he has the tune in augmentation, in, in, in um, augmentation, meaning it goes twice as slowly, then double augmentation in another, in another part, and then in inversion in another part, so it goes upside down. And again, you could say to me, oh, very clever, but why does that work? 
Aha, ha because it happens to make it so that every single chord is a concord as it goes through. All of it goes, that goes through obeys the rules of harmony. Huh. You say, why should, it, why should the ordinary person listening to it bother and mind whether it obeys the rules of harmony? The rules of harmony are not rules, they are observations. We've observed that the, rule, the word rule is a bad word mm. for harmony. We've observed what people like, and we've put it into our academic notebooks, what people like. So they're observations, they're not rules. We observe, oh, you like it when it does that, but you don't like it when it does that. Right. We then call it a, a rule. In my view, it should be called an observation. And we put them all together, and all the, so writing all those different parts in double augmentation, in canon, and putting them all together, it still observes uh, all those things. It still obeys all the observations that we've observed before people like. Yeah. That's why it's brilliant, mm. unbelievable. Yeah. Miserere Nostri of, of Talis. Listen she to can. it. I know that, but we oh, you do? Oh yes, I wouldn't even try and play it. It's no, just, <laughs> it is just uh, uh, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. There's one part which is unrelated to all the others, and the um, the theory is that Bird put it in as a tribute to his teacher Talis, oh. just added a part because they they did that sort of thing in yeah. those days. <laughs>